Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to service your uh, Shimano rear hub. So that's um, a ball bearing rear hub, cup and cone. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run through it with you step by step. So you should be able to complete it yourself. Right, so here's the uh, wheel in question, Shimano hub. Um, obviously, what you need to do is remove it from your bike, take off your uh, cassette off the free hub and then what you need is a couple of uh, cone spanners these thin spanners like so they could range in size this just happens to be um, a 15 for the cone on the inside there so a 15 on that flat there and a 17 on the outside on this one on the lock nut on the outside but it could be 13, 17, 14, 17 just depends on what your wheel is so if you get a set of spanners, obviously you just want to hold the, the cone like so in place and just undo the lock nut on the outside. So you put your spanner on the outside and just crack open the lock nut like so. Then you can go ahead and just remove the lock nut on the outside and the, and the uh, associated spacers. Now, the best thing to do with these is obviously put these as as they come off so you so you're aware of how they go back on just put these in a tray somewhere and put them in the order that they come off so start with the uh, lock nut put that in and then obviously your spacer and just look as you take them off to be aware which way they went on just in case there's any difference with the way they uh, with the way they're on there just so you know and you take off your washer like so put them with one side obviously keep them in order so once you've got that removed you can go ahead just hold this hold the free hub side then you can see the flats there where the cone is you can unscrew that off Of there. Now be careful when you're doing this. Obviously, the ball the ball bearings are in there. They should be in grease. They're not going to. They shouldn't all just fall out because there should be grease around them. But obviously, just be aware there's ball bearings in there. So when you wind the cone all the way off, so you've got a fair bit of thread on it. Just wind that. Keep on winding it off. So you get all the way to the end and just obviously put that with your parts in your tray for cleaning. Like so, there's the cone. And once you've done that, turn the wheel round, obviously to the drive side there. And then you can go ahead and remove your axle from the middle like so just by pulling it out carefully out of the centre like that so there's your axle and put that right down for cleaning and inspection so once you've done that you're left with the, the bear hub with the freer body on it now you need to get the, the ball bearings out from inside the free up body there. So we go ahead and we do that now. Right, so when you're ready to remove the ball bearings, if you get yourself a magnet, like a pencil pen magnet, like so, you can just go ahead and pop, pop it in there. Now, there is, there can be a seal on the end here, on there, that can be a seal. Now, you can remove that if you need to, if it's got a dust seal on it but it's not really recommended because you could damage the seal and then you just let water in um, when it's on the road. So if you can leave the seal in place, then you can and just go ahead and get yourself a, a pen magnet like so and then just put it in and run it and just collect the, the ball bearings out of the center like so and they're just stuck to the magnet. So you just go ahead and go around and just get those out of there. Obviously, 
if you're just cleaning it, um, going to clean them and inspect them, keep them um, in a tray to the side that they came from. So if you haven't got new bearings to put back in, just keep these on the side that they come out of. Um, and then, then you know which ones come from which side when you go to put them back in. Because um, obviously they've worn to the shape of the, uh, the cone. So it's better to keep them from the side they came out of. So once you've got them out, you can go ahead and get them back at both sides. Then we we'll move on to the next stage. Right guys, here's a close up of the ball bearings that came, just came out of the wheel. Obviously you can see there's nothing wrong with that one. It's nice and round, smooth. And then you can see that one there. You can see, look at the damage on that there. So obviously that's no good at all. So that'll have to be replaced, as you can see the damage on it. Well, the surface has all come off. So if yours looks like anything like that, then you need to replace them. And obviously with the cone, it's a similar sort of thing with the cone. You're just looking around the outside of the cone itself. And see if there's any corrosion or damage on this part here. Just look around there, make sure there's no pitting, bad pitting, corrosion or anything around that edge there. So obviously the two go sit together, ball bearings sitting on the, like so, on the cone. So you must inspect the cone for any damage around this area. Right guys, if you're at this stage where you've got the uh, axle out the middle and all the ball bearings out and the cup, and the, uh, and the cones are out both sides like so and now you're thinking now you've got it apart you wanted to replace your free hub because your free hub had play in it or you, you needed a new one for any reason and you're wondering how to get that free hub off of there now what you need to do is you've got a, a hex head like so down in the end past where the ball bearings were inside there like so then you can just Go ahead and undo it, like so. So I've just undone that. Once you've got it cracked undone, you can go ahead and just keep winding it off, like so. And then off comes your free air body from the actual hub, like so. There's your free air body. So if you needed to get that off to replace it, and obviously all it is is hex head, like so, through the middle. You'll see your hex was going onto there, like that. Was just holding it on through the middle, like so. When you put it back on, if you're replacing one, just remember to put a little bit of grease on that thread, just to stop it um, getting rusted up or anything. You don't want that season into there, then otherwise you, you have a job to get it undone. So it's better just put a bit of grease on there if you're going to uh, fit, fit it back on. Or you just want to take it off just to check it or anything, then you can. Right, so the next step obviously is to clean up where the bearings were sitting. So if you've taken the free hub body off, then you can go ahead and clean inside where the bearings were in here. Obviously you can get some rag, clean it out or um, lightly um, get a paintbrush and clean it around with some um, degreaser in there. But obviously be careful with the degreaser, you don't want it going inside, down inside anywhere and uh, washing the grease out of the free hub body. So you just want to be careful on this side. Just um, get some uh, paper, stuff it in there and, clean, and wipe it around. Avoid spraying too much in because obviously you're washing the grease out of the actual free hub itself. So that's not a good idea. Obviously on the uh, on the non-drive side, you go ahead and, and degrease that in there. Obviously you spray some uh, solvent in there to get rid of it um, and dry it out of the rag. Make sure it's completely dried out before you start on uh, refitting anything. So the solvent's all evaporated uh, before you go and head and refit anything. So we'll get this cleaned up and we'll move on to the next step. Right guys, once you're ready to, uh, you've got the, everything cleaned up in the hub, both sides, where the bearings are going to sit, and you've got either your free hub 
cleaned up a bit if you removed it obviously where the bearings go or if you put in a new um, hub body on there say if you had a lot of play in the cassette so your free hub body needed replacing then now's the time to obviously replace it so once you've got the, all the parts cleaned up all your cones are inspected for any uh, pitting like I said and the axle make sure there's the axle I said I only removed the uh, non-drive side the cone's still on there and the lock nut from the uh, free hub side the drive side make sure your axle is straight obviously make sure it's not slightly bent or anything before you go ahead and put it back in so first step is obviously if you removed your free hub body if you didn't then you could ignore this but um, I'll just put a smear of grease where it sits there on the face there just put some grease on there just to help it stop it corroding or anything there and obviously you just sit it sit it in place like so once once you've got it sat, sat in place obviously what you want to do is put like I said earlier put some grease on the thread of that what's good hold actually holds it in place stop them threads getting rusty or anything um, now like I showed earlier I removed this and removed the body I just used a, uh, a hex head like so and that fits in there no problem and we'll undo it and tighten it back up but the actual um, tool for the job is a multi spline actually a multi spline in there like so but I appreciate not everyone's got one of these knocking around but you might well have the, Allen, the hex head allen key but you might not have the appropriate multi spline and that is actually a multi spline but like I say a hex head will undo it and tighten it back up but just in case you're wondering it is actually a multi spline so you go ahead you can Put that back. Put that back in, obviously, and tighten it back up. Make sure you haven't cross-threaded it when you're doing that. So you just tighten that down by hand all the way till it stops, like so. And then, obviously, you just get your ratchet. Put your ratchet on, and then uh, tighten it up, like so. So that's on there, you can check that. It's all refitted. Now, next stage obviously, you've got to put some grease in either side where the bearings are going to sit. Now, if you've got a syringe type uh, grease gun like this, then you can go ahead and you can just pump some in like that. But if you haven't got one of those, then you just get yourself uh, the grease in a pot, and then you can just put it in. With your finger just put some on your finger like so just put it on your finger and then literally put it in where the bearings are going to sit just knock it in with your finger like so or you can use a screwdriver if not so once you hit a girl head and put the grease in packed it in you can do this side and you can go ahead put some in there as well and you're ready for the next step Right, so for the next step, obviously you need um, something um, magnetic, like a little screwdriver with a magnetic tip on it, um, just to be able to pick up the bearings, the ball bearings. Now if you haven't got anything like that, then you can just pick them up by hand and then just place them, place them in. Obviously if you put enough grease in there, then you should just be able to drop them in like so and then all you got to do is get a small screwdriver and sit them down into where they're going to sit in position like so then you go ahead and just rotate the wheel slightly and get your next one and just drop it in position put it next to it in there into the grease like so and get your next one and just keep going round like that dropping them in to the grease and just sit them down in there like that so if you haven't got a magnet you can always do that and if you've got a magnetic screwdriver that will pick them up okay then you can use that and just drop them in with a magnetic screwdriver so you can do the same on the
dry side and the non dry side. So you go ahead and put all the uh, ball bearings, if you're replacing them with new ones, obviously it doesn't matter which side they come from, but like I said, if you kept them in the right order from which side they came out of, then you can go ahead, once they're cleaned up, like I said, you can go ahead and just drop them back in, like so, to so carry on and get that done. Right, so once you've got the grease and the ball bearings put into the grease like that, and then you've topped up the grease, make sure the ball bearings are actually covered in grease both sides. There's no point in putting too little grease in there. It's got to have enough to cover the ball bearings up themselves. Then you go ahead and obviously you can refit your uh, axle and you reverse it come out. So obviously you slide it through and just be careful not to knock any of the bearings out when you're putting it through. So just put it through gently like so. If you put enough grease in there, plenty of grease, you shouldn't need to grease um, on the actual cone itself. If you've packed enough grease in there, you should have enough grease that the cone will get covered in grease anyway when you're putting it in. So you can sit that up in there, like so. Rotate it a bit and push it in, like that. And obviously you come round to the opposite side. Like so, so you can just hold this, like that, stop it pushing back through. So you get your cone, and then you go ahead and thread the cone back onto the axle. So you can go ahead and thread that all the way on, like so. So once you've got that threaded on, then obviously you put your uh, you can put your washer on, and then your um, lock nut. Obviously you want to get this threaded on all the way. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Right, so once you've got it, the cone snugged up by hand there, like so. Like that. Obviously, you go in and feel if there's any movement just like that. And obviously, there's still movement in it. So... You can just go ahead then and get your spanner, just hold this side and just, just nip it a little bit more, like so. You still feel a bit of play. Obviously you can feel play there, so if you grab hold the top of the wheel when it's in the bike it'll be exaggerated, so you'll still be able to uh, feel even more then. So once you nipped it up, you can't feel any play. You don't want to go too mad, obviously. you just got to do it in tiny movements and just take the play out and then back it off again obviously there's play there so just tweak it a touch more and there isn't play it's only very small you only got to move it very small amounts you don't you don't do it half a turn or anything like that you just move it just a small small amount at a time so once you're happy with that and you go ahead and just get your washer and your spacer back on and obviously your, uh, your lock nut remembering which way it all come off obviously you can't feel any movement in it still so then to lock it up obviously you need to hold the uh, cone in place so it doesn't move when you're tightening up the lock nut so obviously just hold the cone and then nip up the uh, nip up the lock nut just don't let the obviously don't let the cone spanner move just nipping up the lock nut like so then you go ahead and check it again Make sure there's no play in it. You spin the wheel. Make sure it's quiet. And obviously the free abs working. Like so. So give it a good old spin up. Let the grease go round inside it. Go onto the bearings.
And once you've spun it up for a bit, just get the grease going round in there and check it again. Make sure there's no play. Obviously you can wipe off any excess that comes out, grease or anything. Um, so once you're happy there's no play in it, like so, you can refit it to your bike. Now obviously, when you refit it to your bike, you can grab hold of the top of the wheel when it's fitted and move it. And obviously if you had play before, if you've done it right, you shouldn't have any play in it. But it's always worth checking, go out for a, a ride around the block and then check it again. Actually make sure you physically check the wheel again. Um, after you've done that, just to doubly check it. So obviously you can fit your uh, cassette back on and everything and put it back in the bike. But other than that, it's all there, there's no play in it. Spins freely, obviously you don't want it you don't want it binding or anything like that, it's got to spin nice and free with no play. That's the idea. Right, so that's the uh, steps and stages there complete. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Until the next video, ride safe and I'll see you then.